Now the way that we track electrons in a chemical reaction in order to identify which substances are being oxidized or reduced is using what are called oxidation numbers. Oxidation numbers are used to keep track of the electrons during the chemical reaction. Now in ionic compounds, the oxidation numbers are the same as the charge of the ions. So for example, in sodium chloride, we know in this ionic compound, sodium has a plus one charge and chlorine has a negative one charge. And these are also their oxidation numbers. So the oxidation of sodium is plus one, the oxidation of chlorine is negative one in this case. Now, it's less clear for molecular compounds because if you have a molecular compound, so something like H2O, we know that these substances have not been formed by a transfer of electrons. So within a molecule of H2O, hydrogen and oxygen do not have a charge. So therefore, in order to keep track of electrons, we're not looking at charges, we're looking only at oxidation numbers. You can think of oxidation numbers as being the charge that the atoms would have if the substance were ionic. So if the electrons were transferred completely from one atom to the other in the formation of these compounds, these would be their charges. Now in order to determine the oxidation numbers in the elements of a compound, what we need to do is use a set of rules. And we're going to follow these rules in order. Okay? And there are going to be some things that are different that you wouldn't necessarily expect. So we'll go through some examples so that you can see the different scenarios. Now in your notes on page two, there's a pretty extensive list very detailed with exceptions and more descriptive set of rules for assigning oxidation numbers. Okay, I've got the simple version of those rules listed here and we're going to apply these rules to a number of examples. Now in terms of the exceptions, what you're going to find is that if you follow the rules in order, you're very unlikely going to need to memorize any exceptions per se. All right, so first of all, the basic rule is that elements have an oxidation number of zero, which makes sense because there is no charge and there is no you know, presumed ionic compound that would come out of that. So anytime you have an element, its oxidation number is zero. Now let's look at some examples here. We've got CO, so carbon monoxide. When we look through the rules, the first rule that applies is that oxygen has an oxidation number of negative two. Okay? And this is as expected. For oxygen, it's always negative two, and that's what you would expect in an ionic compound if you thought about oxygen with its six valence electrons and gaining two electrons, it makes sense. Now for the carbon, okay, what you'll find if you look at the chart on page three, you can see that carbon actually has more than one possible oxidation state. Okay, much like something like iron can be positive two or positive three, carbon also has more than one oxygen oxidation state. So there's not a rule that we're going to use specific to carbon. What we're going to do is use the sum rule. So when you have oxidation states, they sum to the charge on the particular molecule or the ion. So in this case, carbon monoxide has no overall charge. So what that means is that the carbon must have an oxidation number of plus two okay, in carbon monoxide. Okay, if we look at carbon dioxide, okay, oxygen is minus two. Okay. In order for the sum of the oxidation states in carbon dioxide to sum to zero, the carbon in this case needs to be positive four. Okay. Because there's two oxygens, 
so that gives a total of negative 2. So the carbon must be positive 4 in order to have a zero sum. With sodium hydride, sodium is an alkali metal, and alkali metals, as the rule suggests, will always, as expected, have a plus 1 oxidation state. Okay, so in this case, hydrogen must be negative 1 in order for the sum to be 0. Now this, if you read through the detailed rules, you'll see that hydrogen is often plus 1, but there is an exception when it's in a metal hydride. And as you can see by following the rules in order, we didn't need to know the exception off the top of our head. It naturally was determined by following the rules. All right, with this magnesium titanium oxide, okay, the rules tell us magnesium is plus 2 and oxygen is minus 2. Now, just to be clear, what we're doing is showing the individual oxidation states of the elements. So each magnesium in this has an oxidation of plus 2. So to figure out what titanium is, what we need to do is look at the fact that we've got 2 at plus 2, plus we've got titanium, plus we've got four oxygens, each at negative 2, and that all needs to equal 0. When we solve this, we can see that titanium must have an oxidation state in this particular compound of plus 4. With this copper dichromate, the only element that is given is oxygen. So there are different techniques for helping us when we've basically got two unknowns. When we've got an ionic compound, so this is an ionic compound, we can actually break it up into its ions and we can simplify the process. So this breaks up into copper plus and Cr2O7 2 minus. Okay, so we can see the copper here has a plus one. By breaking it up into its ions, we see that's the charge and the oxidation state of copper. Okay, then we can either solve using the whole molecule or we can solve using just this ion here. Oxygen is negative 2, so 2 chromines plus negative 14, which is 2 times the oxygen, has got to equal negative 2 because in this case, the sum of the oxidation states needs to equal the sum of the charge. Okay. And when we solve this, we find that each chromium is therefore plus 6. Okay. Both chromiums together is positive 12, so each individual chromium is plus 6. In this case, you've got an alkali earth metal of magnesium with the plus 2, and the nitrogen is minus 3. In this particular one, it's a straightforward ionic compound, so the charges on each of the elements are, as predicted, their oxidation states. KClO3, potassium is plus 1, the oxygen is minus 2, and using the zero sum rule, we get plus 5. Okay, in this particular one, the only one that's given is oxygen. So if I split it up into its ions, I can see that the chromium's oxidation state is plus 3. Oxygen is minus 2 and nitrogen, in this case, is plus 5. I have done a lot of examples for this to try to show you the process. Okay. Being able to find the oxidation numbers will be useful to identify 
which substances are gaining and losing electrons in a chemical reaction.